Are saunas the next big performance enhancing drug? Then stay tuned and find out. Hi, I'm Christopher Brenner with the Muscle Doc Method. Heat acclimation through sauna use, a term known as hypothermic conditioning, has a broadening understanding of its overwhelming health benefits. Studies have shown significant reduction in cardiovascular disease, hypertension, Alzheimer's, and mental health disorders such as depression. Today, however, I want to talk about its effect on growth hormone, muscle mass, and athletic endurance. First, let's talk about growth hormone and insulin growth factor 1, or IGF-1. GH and IGF-1 are both anabolic hormones that increase lean muscle and reduces adipose tissue or fat simultaneously. Pretty cool, right? Additionally, GH and IGF-1 promote muscle repair, which leads to faster recovery, improved performance, and easier acquisition of muscle mass. I don't know about you, but the sound of easier acquisition of muscle mass sounds pretty cool, right? Growth hormone has also been shown to significantly decrease oxidation of proteins. This increases net protein synthesis or creation and thus hypertrophy or growth of new muscle. Additionally, by improving insulin sensitivity, it reduces protein degradation, much like growth hormone. Now let's talk about increased athletic endurance. Hyperthermic conditioning optimizes blood flow to the skeletal muscles because it increases plasma volume. This leads to endurance enhancements in your next workout or competition when your core body temperature is once again elevated. Heat acclimation increases blood flow to your muscles and this increases oxygen and glucose to keep them fueled while removing byproducts of metabolic process such as lactic acid. Oftentimes during vigorous training your muscles will deplete these nutrients and rely on local glycogen storage. We all have been to that point in our training when we hit the wall, you're done, toast, nothing left in you, and in biological terms this is due to the depletion of glycogen storage in the muscles. Hypothermic conditioning has been shown to reduce muscle glycogen use by 40 to 50 percent compared to before heat acclimation. Lastly, I want to mention detoxification benefits of hypothermic conditioning, which is extremely important for you athletes that use performance enhancing drugs. Sweating facilitates the excretion of certain toxins that bioaccumulate in the muscle, adipose tissue, and organs of the body. In a study, it was observed that heavy metals like arsenic, mercury, and cadmium were excreted at a significantly higher percentage in the sweat versus urine. This is important to remove those heavy metals found in performance enhancing drugs from the body. So let's just do a bit of a quick recap to the benefits of hyperthermic conditioning. We know it increases both growth hormone and IGF-1, which leads to the acquisition of lean muscle. We know GH and IGF-1 decreases oxidation of proteins. This increases protein synthesis, leading to muscle repair and growth. We know heat acclimation increases blood flow to the muscles, improving endurance and reliance on muscle glycogen storage. And lastly, detoxification of heavy metals from the body. So you're probably asking, well, how many times a week and for how long should I stay in the sauna? And that is a very good question and is going to vary from person to person and their state of health. As for myself, I aim for sauna bathing two to three times a week and I stay in for as long as I can stand the heat. Then I step outside to cool off. But no matter how enthusiastic you might be, remember to be careful. You should take care to drink sufficient fluids prior to and after sauna sessions and should consume electrolyte rich foods post sauna use such as cooked spinach, fish, watermelon, nuts, and seeds. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make my mama proud, show me some love, and hit that like and subscribe buttons. Check out the program links below, and I'll see you in the next episode. Ah.